Hey everyone, I just wanted to run through a quick review of photosynthesis, uh, especially the light reactions part. So we'll do this in a uh, kind of a two-part series. We'll do light reactions for this uh, screencast, and then in the next screencast we'll do the Calvin cycle. Uh, so just a brief summary of the light reactions. So in the light reactions you're going to be taking uh, certain reactants, uh, especially water, and um, for, the, for the light reaction part, and light. Uh, basically what this is going to do is it's going to convert um, to some high energy products uh, such as ATP, NADPH, and then you're going to get oxygen as a byproduct from the splitting of water. So let's do a quick review of this process. I asked you in class to uh, basically describe the path of light from uh, the external structure of the plant to the internal parts of the chloroplast. So let's run through that really quickly. You'll see this again. Um, the most photosynthetic part of the plant is the leaf, right? So they act as solar panels essentially for uh, the plant. If you were to take a cross section uh, of the plant, you'd see uh, this mesophyll layer here. Uh, so that's this, this layer right here. And what you see inside that layer, each of these are individual uh, mesophyll cells. Okay, so if we focus on an individual mesophyll cell, uh, these are the cells that have the, the, the greatest concentration of chloroplasts. So the organelle the photosynthetic organelle for photosynthetic organisms is the chloroplast. If we were to take an even more detailed look at this structure and cross-section the actual organelle, what you'd see inside are these um, stacks of thylakoids. So thylakoids are these little disc structures uh, shown here, shown here. So uh, they basically occur inside the chloroplast as these stacks. Now each individual stack we call a, a, a granum, uh, the plural for all the granums inside the uh, um, chloroplast would be grana, right? So that terminology is not too, too important, but I just want to make that distinction. So um, stacks of thylakoids. Uh, if you wanted to define the, define the thylakoid a little more detail, you have the uh, inner space here. So it's a hollowed out um, sac essentially. And uh, this would be the, the membrane part where you're going to find the photosystems, okay? Okay, so if we look at this process in a little more detail uh, here, this summary has obviously been pretty important as well. So if we look here at light, obviously light's going to be important for photosynthesis. Uh, light's going to cross through all those layers and basically hit the, uh, the thylakoid membranes. Water is going to be important for this process. We'll also cover that in a minute. But overall, the light reactions of uh, photosynthesis are going to recharge um, NADP+, plus, which is essentially an empty electron carrier, uh, and it's going to re essentially recharge, by recharge I mean to, to, to energize uh, NA, uh, NADP+, plus and ADP. Okay, so those things are basically recycling back into the light reactions process. So if you were to look at the, the next step, the, the process in the light reactions is basically going to produce ATP, and it's going to add electrons to NAD+, P plus making NADPH, okay? Uh, oxygen is produced as a byproduct. That's a toxic byproduct for the, for the plant cells, so they release uh, oxygen through the stomata, uh, which are the, basically the pores in the plant leaf. Uh, and that's a basic summary for the light reaction. So this, this is the first half of photosynthesis. It's a basic summary of reactants and products for, for uh, the light reaction photosynthesis. Looking at things in a little more detail, okay, you can kind of see that uh, there are these things called pigments involved. Okay, chlorophyll is an example of a pigment. Pigments are basically just light absorbing molecules of which chlorophyll is one. There's several examples of chlorophyll. There's chlorophyll A, there's chlorophyll B. There are different classes of pigments aside from chlorophylls, the so called carotenoids, which are, which are essentially um, antioxidants, right? They collect free radicals and prevent the, the plant cells from being damaged. Uh, if, you, if you look at a chlorophyll molecule, basically, it's going to uh, absorb light. And, and what that does, essentially, is it takes the um, electrons in chlorophyll and takes them from a ground or unexcited state okay, and transitions them into an excited state. So essentially what that's doing um, for the atoms is it's taking them, so if you had a, I guess, a generic atom shown here, a couple of rings. Um, basically it's going to take the electrons, 
from say this level and pull them back further and, and basically that's this would be the excited state this would be like the ground state okay so it's exciting them it's it's taking them from ground to excited state uh, when they when when light is is uh, done exciting basically the the electrons what you're going to do is they're going to return back to this ground state and in the process uh, of that uh, heat is generated as is uh, light which in this case we call fluorescence so that's what actually is shown over here is fluorescence the uh, chlorophyll in this in this suspension basically is going to be excited by light and um, in the process of returning to ground state it's going to turn you know fluorescent pink <clears throat> okay so let's talk about a little little more detail of this this process as a whole um, We'll put it all together in a minute, but I just first want to introduce you to the photosystem. Okay, so photosystem is a is a complex of proteins uh, and pigments. Okay, so let's talk about that. What I mean in a little more detail. This this whole structure here is the photosystem. Okay, uh, it's a membrane, uh, integral membrane protein, meaning meaning basically it spans the membrane. So if you have your your membrane here. To here, it's going to span the whole width of that membrane. You have uh, the first thing here is a light harvesting complex. So this purple portion right here is the protein, uh, and and basically studded throughout that protein, you'll find uh, pigments like these, perhaps chlorophylls right here. Okay, so that's what I mean by photosystem complex being proteins right here and pigments. Uh, so let's talk about the light harvesting complex first. Light's going to come in. And what it does to these uh, these chlorophyll molecules or or whatever pigment this is, it's going to take it from ground to excited, ground to excited, ground to excited, ground to excited. Okay, so there's no exchange of electrons at this portion. There's no exchange in the light harvesting complex. Um, essentially, it's the wave. Okay, it's the wave of energy. So this this guy right here is going to excite the neighbor. It's going to excite the neighbor, and eventually you're going to get to a specialized pair of chlorophyll A. So this is chlorophyll A we're talking about here, inside the reaction center complex. So again, this structure right here is a light uh, is the reaction center complex. The, the reaction center complex is the place uh, where redox reactions occur. Okay, so it's in the centralized location. It's only the chlorophyll A molecules that are going to pass their electrons uh, from the from the specialized pair to what's called the, the primary uh, electron acceptor shown here. Okay, so this is the this is the redox part. So these chlorophyll A's are giving their electrons to the primary electron acceptor, therefore they are being oxidized and this primary electron acceptor is being reduced. Okay, so that's some basic terminology for what a photosystem is. We can put it all together uh, in the context of the actual process of, of light reactions in this figure shown here. So let's get this out of the way by seeing, saying uh, first the photosystem 2 actually occurs first in the process whereas photosystem 1 is second and that's just for historical purposes photosystem 1 which occurs second in the pathway was discovered first. Okay the same process is going to occur here light's gonna come in you get excitation of these chlorophylls ultimately leading to uh, uh, excitation of this special chlorophyll A pair, so this P680 pair. Um, P680 is going to give electrons to the primary uh, electron acceptor here and essentially what's, what's going to happen then is those electrons are going to travel uh, into this electron transport chain. Okay, so we're at the electron transport chain. The electron transport chain is essentially the same thing that was occurring in uh, cellular respiration, so I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on it. This, this the same thing occurs. Uh, basically, hydrogen um, ions are going to be taken from the stroma and pumped into the thylakoid space. So there's actually a difference in, in location because we're not talking about the mitochondria, right? So we're, we're talking about the the chloroplast. So H plus ions will be um, pumped through this electron transport chain. Uh, into the into the thylakoid space here. So I want you to get that vocabulary down because that'll be on your test. Uh, just as in um, the mitochondrion, uh, the energy from electrons is going to be used to pump these hydrogen ions from this space to this space. 
Okay, it's the same exact deal. What's not depicted here is that there's also um, ATP synthase, which will allow this high concentration of, of hydrogen ions to, to pass through it to create ATP. So that's all the same. And there's actually a figure at the very end of this PowerPoint that summarizes this. What I really want to focus on right here is, is this water. So if you recall, this P680 lost its electrons because it was oxidized by, you know, by giving its electrons to the primary acceptor. Um, th these electrons here need to be replaced, and the way that they're replaced is by the splitting of um, water. So H2O is split. It's split into oxygen, which leaves the cells as a byproduct. And um, hydrogen, right? So the Electrons are going to be taken from the hydrogen, and that's what actually feeds into the system. So electrons are stripped, this feeds into the system. One of these hydrogens is also going to be loaded onto um, NADP plus over here. So they play a dual role of, of also being transported, but they also um, play a role in creating this concentration gradient. Okay, so that's the that's the really important part of this process. Um, once those electrons, remember the electrons that were passed down this pathway right here. They're, they're sent into this um, P700 position. But when they arrive here at P700, they are, are um, so the electrons are lower energy. And they're basically uh, recharged by the second photosystem through the same process um, that excitation occurs in, in the photosystem too. So basically light's going to come in, it's going to excite these chlorophyll molecules, and basically um, recharge these electrons in this this pathway right here so they're recharged they're put um, the primary acceptor takes them and basically loads them onto NADP plus so NADP plus is reduced creating uh, NADPH NADPH is going to go to Calvin which we'll talk about in the next screencast okay I know it's a lot of stuff I'm going fast I'm trying to keep under the 15 uh, minute mark so that I can put this on YouTube. So I apologize for going so quickly. Okay, this this slide kind of brings it all together. I'm not going to spend any more time on this process. You should know uh, essentially this process right here pretty well. This picture basically summarizes though that the the importance of ATP synthase. So again, hydrogen ions are going to come from the stroma. They're going to be concentrated. So it's going to be a high concentration of hydrogen ions here. Once that high concentration is, is reached, uh, they're going to flow from high concentration to low concentration. So that's free of, free of energy. It's passive transport through ATP synthase, which makes ATP uh, same as in cell respiration. Okay. ATP goes to Calvin. NADPH goes to Calvin, okay? Uh, oxygen is a waste product, leaves the cell. So that accounts for all the products uh, and where they go and, and their importance. So the next screencast, we'll talk about um, the Calvin cycle and its importance. Um, spend some time on this figure as well, kind of comparing uh, mitochondrion and chloroplasts because um, I'm going to ask you a bunch of questions on them. So you should know this stuff. And you really need to be able to compare the two processes and know the difference. Essentially, the difference is going to be in like where these uh, things are being transported to and uh, concentrated, and how they how they flow through ATP synthase. So definitely know that it's going to it's going to be uh, on your test. Okay, so this slide quickly summarizes what we've done. We've made oxygen as a byproduct. ATP and ADPH are the important products that are going to go on to Calvin cycle next. Okay, so it's a totally different uh, part of photosynthesis occurs in the stroma and basically we'll cover that next okay i hope this helps uh and i'll i'll see you in class soon take care